Surah Al Fatiha, there's a hadith Qudsi, which means that the Prophet said that Allah has said that when we stand up and we recite Surah Al Fatiha in our prayers, there's a direct conversation that we engage in with Allah. Allah says, I have divided the prayer between me and between my slave into two equal halves. And for my slave is whatever he wants. Whatever he has asked for, he will get it. Alright, when the slave stands and he says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, which means that the ultimate praise at all times, at all places, is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, exclusively. And who is this Allah? He is Rabbil Alameen. He is the one who created, who sustained, provided, maintained, protected, and guided every single human being, regardless of whenever and wherever they have ever existed. And you say, all praises for Him. Allah says, Hamad al My slave just praised me. My slave just praised me. Ar Rahman al Rahim. The one who is abundantly merciful. The one who is constantly merciful. Allah responds again and says, Athna alayya abdi. My slave keeps on praising me, praise after praise after praise after praise. He keeps on stacking up praise on me. And then Surah Al-Fatiha goes on and on and on. And this conversation continues between us and Allah. The opening surah of the Quran, Al-Fatiha, which means the opening surah as it is. And we commence our salah with that surah to the degree that salah is not correct for the one who does not read Surah Al-Fatiha. That is how important the surah is. So why is it that we find ourselves knowing the surah off by heart, but we pay lip service to it in salah? The concentration levels on the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha is at times so low that it becomes a minimum. But if I were to ask you, when you fulfill the surah in salah, do you actually concentrate on its meaning? Do you actually know what you are saying? Do you know the connotation, the implication, or do you know how serious a surah it is? If it was not so serious, and it was not such an important surah, do you really think we would be asked to repeat it in every unit of our salah, in every rak'ah of salah? It has in it the core message of the entire deen and religion that we follow. We all know it as Surah Al-Fatiha. It is also known as As-Salah. And this is why, if you look at the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam connected to Surah Al-Fatiha, he says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said, I have divided Surah Al-Fatiha between myself and my worshiper into two. Between myself and my worship. When my worshiper declares, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the worlds. That's a simple translation. But there is a response. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hamidani Abdi. My worshiper has declared my praise. Then we continue to say, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, most beneficent, most merciful. And he says, My worshiper has declared my majesty or my greatness. And then we say, Maliki Yawmiddin, owner of the day of judgment. He says, my worshiper has declared my greatness or my majesty. Amazing. So three responses we got, one with every verse. And there are seven verses of the surah. Now there is a difference of opinion amongst the scholars as to whether the Bismillah rahman rahim at the beginning is a part of the surah or not. Mainly two opinions and the opinion that says it is the first verse, they, they would start counting from Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, six verses down with the last portion as one. And those who say it is not a part of the surah itself, they still read it, obviously. They would still read it. And they would say the last portion, instead of being one verse, is divided into two. So it still makes seven verses. So if we have got the answers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thrice, there is now a verse where we are saying, wa 
You alone we worship and you alone we seek help from. When this verse is said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is between myself and my worshiper and now I will give my worshiper whatever he asks for. So what is the most important prayer we have? What is it that we will ask for thereafter? We ask for guidance and steadfastness on the straight path because that is the most important gift we can all have. So this is why we say, Guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the path of steadfastness. That dua we make it so many times a day that if I were to ask you, how many times did you pray for guidance brother or sister today? You would have to count. And after asking for guidance, we are telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what type of the path we would like to follow. And this is why we say, The path of those whom you have favored, whom you have granted a gift upon, the path of those whom you have favored, not the path of those who have earned your anger, nor the path of those who have gone astray. We are talking of those, the first category, those who knew the truth, but they rejected it, they did not follow it. And the second category, those who were astray, neither did they know it, nor were they bothered to know it. Now, if we take a look at these three categories of people, the first, those whom Allah has favored, who are they? In another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, speaking about those whom he has granted favor upon from amongst the messengers. So the messengers are the ones whom Allah has favored. So every salah I'm asking Allah guide me to the path of the messengers. And God guide me to the path of the truthful, those who have accepted, those who are truthful, meaning when they say they believe, they follow through that belief because it would be hypocritical to say I believe and then we don't follow. This is why whenever we say I believe, Allah says I will test you to see if you are telling the truth or you are just a liar. If you look at Surah Al-Ankabut at the beginning, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, does man think that we are going to allow them to say that we are believers and then they will have a happy life? Do you think, O oh man, that it is enough for you to say, I'm a believer and then you will not be tested? Allah says, we have indeed tested those before you in order that we distinguish between who is truthful in their claim of belief and who is actually false. Every moment of our lives is a test to see if we lead it in the obedience of our maker or if we obey the devil, shaitan. This is why we say, Alladheena an'amta alayhi. Those whom Allah has favored upon me, Allah make us also from amongst those whom he has favored. He has indeed favored us by giving us the deen, by making us people who are following the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are very fortunate. The biggest gift that we have is the gift of Iman, the gift of faith. Sometimes we take it for granted and sometimes we allow the glamour and the glitter of the dunya to overtake our hearts and minds. And we become people who get so engrossed in the dunya that we begin to drown in it. Let's get back to this an'amta alayhim. We said those who have sacrificed their lives and the pious, the good, as-salihin, those who are good and pious. So we are asking Allah so many times a day, Ya Allah, make me follow the path of those who, whom you have befriended, those whom you have favored upon, the, the path of the messengers, the path of those who sacrificed their lives for your cause. And with us, it's not like we have to sacrifice a life for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't even sacrifice 10 minutes for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day sometimes. So where is the gap between us and them? When we say, oh Allah, guide us to that path of those who, whom you have favored upon. Those were the ones whom, when they heard a verse of the Quran being recited to them, they immediately surrendered. It trembled their hearts. So every day we make this dua so many times in Surah Al-Fatiha. We need to think about it on a daily basis. Oh Allah, I am asking you to guide me to such a powerful path. I'm asking you to guide me to the path of those whom you have favored. 
I am asking you to protect me from the path of those who have earned your anger. They are the ones who knew the truth and they left it. Sometimes we know the truth and we leave it. We might not be from amongst the same category as in what is mentioned in the surah, but some of our qualities begin to appear like those. Sometimes we know what is right and wrong, but we couldn't be bothered to follow it. You find brother, what's happening? It's time for Jumu'ah. Nah, don't worry. The Imam speaks very long. So I will sleep until I hear Aqulu Qawli Hal. Then I will get up. If that's the case, we are losers. When we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and you know what it means, and you know exactly the interpretation of it, and you have it in your mind, then you know, mashallah, this salah is going to be beneficial for me more than if I don't know what it means. I'm just paying lip service to it. And sometimes, as I said, and I told you, I'll show you, when we're in a rush, we don't even realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds with the verses. So you find a brother or a sister. What is that? Wallahi, it's happening. The only thing you can hear is dalin. Do you know what dalin means? It means those who are astray. So why is it that we rush our salah and we rush such a powerful surah in, in the Quran? That is a surah where Tawheed of all its three categories is reiterated. If you look at Allah's names, you will find them there. If you look at Allah's qualities, you will find them there. If you look at the, the worship of Allah, the, the fact that He is the deity, and the fact that he is the only one worthy of worship, you find it there. We say, You alone we worship. We are declaring what is known as uluhiyya. The fact that the deity is Allah alone. None is worthy of worship besides him. We are saying, you alone we worship. You alone we ask for help. Amazing. We are asking him from his mercy. We say, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, most beneficent, most merciful. If you were to ask me, what's the difference between the two? When they are both extracted from the same root word of the Arabic language, I will tell you, one has a broader meaning than the other. One is a specialized mercy for those who have believed. And the other is a mercy for all creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which includes those who have disbelieved as well. This is why Allah says in the Quran, it is Allah, one of his qualities towards the believers, is he has what is known as or he is Rahimun. Rahim meaning a specific type of mercy, especially allocated for those who have believed. And we are asking this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say all praise is due to Allah. You know that when we say Alhamdu, we are talking of all praise because the Alif and the Lam in the Arabic language is not always for one meaning. It actually sometimes comes in order to to cover every single aspect of the item that is connected to it. So when we say Alhamdu, we are saying all praise is due unto Allah. No matter how much we praise Allah, it's not enough. And this is why we, we make a dua that, Oh Allah, for you is praise. As much praise as would make you happy. Up to when you are pleased and even beyond the point that pleases you, you still own all the praise. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And when we say Rabbul Alameen, what are we confirming? We are confirming, you see the term Rabbun. It's a very simple Arabic term. Its meaning will fill a whole booklet in the English language. When we say Rabbun, it includes the one who nourishes, cherishes, sustains, provides for, protects, you know, the, the, the curer, sustainer, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of the existence of myself is my Rabb. That is the meaning of the term Rabbun, just to start off with. So when I say Rabbul Alameen, which means the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of all the worlds, all the worlds means, you know, you could say mankind, jinn kind, all the creatures, you can also go beyond that and say this world. And if there is any other galaxy or Milky Way besides this, Allah knows best. He is still the Rabb of everything that is in creation, all creatures are absolutely depend up, dependent upon the Creator Himself. We're declaring such great greatness in, in Salah, in Surah Al-Fatiha. And this is why it is also known as Ummul Quran. You know, we say the mother of the Quran. In the Arabic language, the term mother of is used in order to portray how serious an item is. Wallahi, it is so rich in meaning that we would not be doing justice to it. 
if we just spoke for half an hour or one hour. But this is only a synopsis. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately after that makes mention of the qualities of his Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. So you find Rububiyyah, which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector. He is the Rabb. And then you find the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same surah. Nobody is to be associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a partner in worship that is uluhiyya nor in any of his names or qualities that is known as al asma was sifat the names and the qualities of Allah he is unique in them he is singular in them he is the only one who has those qualities and names of that level and we will never associate a partner with him in that and we will not associate partnership in worship because we worship Allah alone and this is why we say you alone we worship and you alone we seek help from the discussion of all three aspects of Tawheed in the same surah because we don't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any of his names or qualities in rendering any act of worship indeed this issue of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is driven home in Surah Al-Fatiha. And this is why sometimes you have people saying, you know, it's a surah that I haven't understood. And you think to yourself, how can you not have understood Surah Al-Fatiha when it has the core of belief? It guides you the way. It will lead you to the path. And it will ensure that you do not render an act of worship for anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wish to end by saying, that there is a very fine line between respect and worship. Some people respect another human being and they cross the line to worship without really sometimes pondering over it. So remember, no matter how knowledgeable I may be or anyone else may be, we respect them, but we don't worship them. There is a difference. It's Allah alone whom we render acts of worship for. And the reason I chose to end in that way is because no matter how advanced a person can have got in this world, we will not render an act of worship for anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He open our doors, and may He grant us really ease of learning the Arabic language. Until we meet again, we say, Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabi Muhammad, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, Astaghfirullah.